Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So today we're going to start a little mini-series, a three-parter, and we're going to be exploring sorting algorithms. So I made a video just a little while back uh, where we raced a bunch of sorting algorithms and there's going to be spoilers in this mini-series, so if you want to see the original uh, race, then I'll just leave a link up above here, you can go and have a bit of a look at that. There's a bunch of accompanying ebooks to this video series, and uh, I'll put that up for the Patreons, just as a big thank you for supporting the channel, and if you'd like to support the channel, then I'll leave a link up above, and another one down below. Cheers! Okay! The mini-series is called, Why is Radix Sort So Fast? Part 1. Why are comparison sorts so slow? Alright, so in order to explore why comparison sorts, or the Radix Sort, or anything, uh, is as fast or slow as it is uh, in terms of computer science, we often have to understand the problem from a very fundamental level. What we have to talk about is exactly what does it mean to sort a list of elements. So we're just talking about numerical elements here, we'll just keep things nice and simple, but what does it mean to take a, an unsorted list of elements and then to sort them in numerical order? So if we look at these four elements just here, we've got 417, 582, 651, and 185. You can pretty much tell just from a glance that 185 is the smallest number. So you'll put that first, and then the second smallest is 417, followed by the 582, and then the 651 on the end. There we go, the list is sorted. But what did we do just then? What we did there is we found a permutation of the elements. So a permutation is just any arrangement of the elements. The sorted list is one particular permutation of those four elements. It happens to be the permutation where if you take one item, say the 417 just here, then in sorted order, every element to the left, you can be guaranteed will be smaller than it, and every element to the right will be larger than it. Okay, so if we've got four elements in our list and we're trying to sort them, how many permutations are there? So how many different ways can we arrange four elements? And the answer is actually four factorial, or it's four times three times two times one. Uh, all right, so we're gonna start using uh, colored boxes just here to illustrate permutations. So if there's four elements and we're trying to list every possible permutation or every possible order of those four elements, the first element can be any one of the four colors. It could be red, green, blue, or yellow then the second element can be any one of the three remaining colors. Yeah, so if we pick red first, then the second element could be green, blue, or yellow. Likewise, the third element of the permutations is going to be any one of the two remaining colors. And then finally, on the end, we have to pick whatever's left. So if we were to draw the entire list of permutations out as a tree, it might look something like this. This tree just here actually represents all 24 permutations of the colored boxes. And the way that we read it is something like this. We just pick a color, an initial color, say the blue one just here. And then once we've picked the blue one, our next option could be either red, green, or yellow. So you just follow the arrows. Uh, so if we go blue, then yellow, then the third element of our permutation could be either red or green. Let's say we pick green, uh, then we might pick red at the end. Yeah, so our permutation, if we just follow down the arrows, would be blue, yellow, green, red. Now, what we're gonna imagine when we come to sort, we're gonna say that the top row represents the smallest elements of the lists, and the bottom row represents the largest elements of the lists. So here we've got the numbers, the same numbers from before, I think. 417, 582, 651, and 185. The colored boxes are in sorted order when we take them from that original permutation, and we sort of mix them up a little bit, and we come to this one. 185, 417, 582, 651. The tree actually represents all permutations of the colored boxes. So what we could do is we could say that the sorted permutation for this particular list of numbers is this one just here. Yellow, red, green, blue. Yeah, you see the same order as the colored boxes. So if our boxes had a whole bunch of different numbers, say 718, 133, 965, and 230, then we can have a look at our tree, and once again, we could map out the single sorted permutation from our tree. Yeah, so the sorted order for this list would go green, yellow, red, blue. You can just arrange these items in some order, and one of the orders, one of the permutations, is the sorted permutation. Now, you might find sometimes that there's duplicate elements in your list. In this little list just here, we've got two copies of 436. Our numbers just here are 991, 436, 762, and 436. So if we were to sort these four items just here, uh, it would generally be considered okay to put either of the two 436s uh, either way around. We could say 436 in green, then 436 in yellow, 
Uh, or we could go 436 in yellow, then 436 in green. Now there is actually a name for this exact topic, which is the stability of a sort, but we can talk about that another time, I think. At any rate, there are two permutations of this particular data set, which would be considered sorted. If we map this out using our permutations, then we see that there's, uh, there's actually two paths yeah, that would both be considered sorted in our little tree just here. So it is possible that there's multiple permutations that would be considered sorted if you've got uh, duplicates in your data. All right, but let's just have a bit of a think about what we're doing here. So when we sort a list of elements, what we're doing in a way is searching for one permutation amongst n factorial permutations. So sorting in a way is, is very, very closely related to searching to the, to the point where we could actually draw our little tree from before as a little maze to sort a list of n elements is to find the single sorted permutation from amongst n factorial permutations. It's pretty much what we're doing. If we've got an algorithm that doesn't consider all n factorial permutations, if it misses some of the possible paths, then there's always a chance that the sorted permutation is one of the paths that we failed to check. So there's no way of getting around the fact that we need somehow to consider every one of those n factorial possible permutations. We can't skip any of them. Uh, any of them that we skip could be the sorted uh, permutation. Okay, that's good. So, so a list of n elements just implies a gigantic tree of possible permutations. Uh, any list of 10 elements actually implies a tree of 3.6 million permutations. And a list of 100 elements implies 100 factorial permutations, which is just a gigantic number. It's uh, 9.33 by 10 to the 157th power. There's not enough memory in the entire world. There's not enough atoms in the observable universe to store that kind of tree. With sorting, what we're trying to do is uh, find the single sorted permutation from amongst n factorial permutations. But we don't want to take up all of the memory in the world probably. <laughs> and we also want to do it fairly quickly. So we're after some efficient way to uh, search through these uh, permutations. We're going to have a look at how comparison sorts exploit some very, very simple uh, operations and some clever logic to quickly cut down those paths that we've got to search and find the single sorted permutation. Okay, so what is a comparison sort? Well, a comparison sort is a sort that uses either the less than or the greater than operator and it compares two elements at once from our little list that we're sorting. Okay, so what I might do is just step through a fictional perfect comparison sort using our little tree and some colored boxes. We're gonna be sorting four elements here just once again because it's easier to illustrate. I've illustrated the boxes just here with uh, little question marks in them. And that's just to show that we don't get to see the elements inside the uh, boxes. It might seem a little bit strange if we're sorting elements to not look at what the numbers actually are. But in a comparison sort, the computer just reacts to either the less than or the greater than operator, the comparison of two elements. Uh, it doesn't really pay attention to the numbers themselves. So we're going to play this like a computer and we're going to do it blind. Hopefully we can end up with a sorted list in the end. Let's see how we go. Um, okay, so at the moment we don't know anything at all. We've just got four colored boxes. We have no idea what the values in them are and we have no idea what the sorted permutation is. We're going to have to ask a question with either the less than or the greater than operator. I'll just pick the less than for this example. Here we go. Is red less than green? No. <laughs> We can see that the answer to the question is red less than green. The answer is no. So if red is not less than green, then the sorted permutation that we're looking for can't be any of the paths where red appears before green. We can gray out any branch where the red element appeared before the green. And if we have a bit of a look at what we've done just here, so this is the final tree after we've knocked out every branch that we can from that one question. If you count up the number of branches that are left, you might notice that there's 12, which is a fascinating number really because we started with 24. Let's ask another question. Let's compare yellow and blue. All right, so we're gonna ask the question, is blue less than yellow? No, the answer is no once again. 
the blue value is not less than the other one. In other words, the blue value is greater than or equal to yellow. Okay, so once again, we cannot get any of the branches of our tree where the blue value comes before the yellow. So we've knocked out half of the remaining branches again. There was 12 branches before we asked that question, and now there's only six. So, so far we know that green comes before red and yellow comes before blue. Knowing only these two tiny pieces of information, we can actually knock out three quarters from the original tree. We know that the sorted list is one of these six remaining permutations. Let's make another comparison. So at the moment, if we look at this thing, we see on the top row just here, there's a green box and there's a yellow box. And that means that the smallest element in the list is either green or yellow. It has to be. Those are the only two boxes left at the top. Uh, but we don't know which one it is. So let's compare the two, shall we? All right, next question. Is green less than yellow? Yes green is less than yellow. So the answer has come back as yes, green is indeed less than yellow. Let's update our tree and see how that changes the permutations that we've got to check. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Would you look at this? So green has to be the smallest element of the four. And we know that the sorted permutation is one of these three remaining paths. So it either goes green, then red, then yellow, then blue, uh, or it could go green, then yellow, then red, then blue. Or the other option is green, then yellow, then blue, then red. So also notice that once again, we've halved the number of remaining permutations. We keep halving the number of uh, permutations that we've got to check every time we ask these questions. We started with 24, then we asked a question and reduced that to 12 possible paths that we've got to check. Then we reduced it to six possible paths, and now we've just got three left. It would be nice to know which is the highest element in our list. So we know that it's either blue or red, since if we look at this uh, bottom row just here, we see that they're the only options left. Let's ask the question, is red less than blue? And the answer is yes. Red is indeed less than blue. This means blue actually has to be the largest element. There's only two permutations left. The sorted permutation either goes green, red, yellow, blue, or green, yellow, red, blue. All right, so we've got to ask one more question. Is red less than yellow? And the answer is no. Red is not less than yellow. Red is greater than or equal to yellow, which means that we can fill out our permutation tree completely. We have found the single sorted permutation from amongst n factorial permutations. The single sorted permutation of those boxes is, uh, drum roll please, green, yellow, red, blue. And indeed, if we arrange the boxes in that order and I reveal finally what the actual numbers in the boxes were, we see that the list is indeed sorted. 261 was the green box, 485 was the yellow box, 772 was the red box and 816 was the blue box. So what you'll notice is that every time we asked a yes or no question, we were pretty much able to halve the total number of paths in our tree that we still had left to check. You won't always halve the total number of uh, paths that you've still got to check because sometimes there'll be an odd number of paths. Yeah, but pretty much every time you ask a comparison, uh, be it less than or greater than, any of those yes, no questions, you can pretty much halve the total number of permutations that you have left to check. And what does this mean for the time complexity of a comparison sorting algorithm? Well, it means that it's fundamentally limited to a certain maximum speed. The number of comparisons that we need to perform is the same as the number of times we could divide n factorial by two before we reach one. The log base two of uh, n factorial, yeah. <laughs> uh, and another really famous name for that uh, in big O notation is uh, the very famous n log n. Yeah, so this is why no matter what you do, if you're doing a comparison sort, uh, you can't break free of that boundary. You can't go faster than n log n. And if you are going faster, then you're not checking all of the permutations and you can be guaranteed that sometimes your list would not be sorted. Okay, so that's pretty much sorting. Uh, you can't get better than n log n. It doesn't matter what you do. You've got to search uh, n factorial different things. And I mean, what are you gonna be doing if you're not doing a comparison of elements? 
So n log n is uh, pretty much as fast as you can possibly go. Uh, anyway, um, I guess that's it. Unless, maybe. So in the next video, we're going to have a look at how the radix sort, not just beats, but absolutely shatters the n log n speed barrier. <laughs> Uh, but for now, I just want to say thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a really good day.